Are cafes still the heartbeat of French life today? That's a good question for David Turacamo, our man in Paris. The Café Le Select is one of the legendary cafés of Paris. It was once a left bank hangout for Hemingway, Picasso, and Henry Miller. So it should hardly be surprising to find an artist here today. His name is Rick Tolka, and he's been drawing the faces at Le Select for more than a decade now. I love drawing French faces. They're the best. They've they just got the best noses and uh, the expressions. No, a French nose is the best thing to draw. Really? And, oh, yeah, yeah. Just look at them. Next time you're walking around, just look at the noses. I mean, it's this beautiful nose. Some of them look like Pontiacs, you know, old 50s from the 50s. <laughs> you may have noticed, uh, Rick's a transplanted New Yorker. He's been living here since the mid-90s. And while he's captivated by their noses, what he's captured is their attitude. Uh, that uniquely French ability to sit in a cafe as if they owned the place. I, I think it's just a cultural... See, they, people say, like, French people are cold and, and they're not friendly, but they are. But maybe when they're just sitting at the cafe, they just have this French... They just have a French look. I, 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 okay, I so, uh, like every artist, he has a hard time explaining his inspiration. But, as every American who's ever been to Paris has discovered, the cafe is a great place to observe the French in their preferred natural habitat. It's their living room, it's their library, uh, it's their office, meetings. I mean, I, many people come here and have meetings with uh, people. Uh, lunches could last for two, three hours. Spend enough time in one cafe and you'll get to know the regulars. And then you'll notice they come at precisely the same time every day. There's, there's a writer in the back who comes in the afternoon uh, and, and the mornings and he sits and writes his books here. Moi, ça fait euh, 42 ans que je le fréquente. Oui. J'avais un rendez-vous avec une fille ici, très belle. J'étais amoureux d'elle. Elle m'a donné rendez-vous, elle n'est jamais venue. Mais moi, j'ai pris l'habitude de venir ici. Mais je crois pas, même aujourd'hui, je crois pas qu'elle viendra. It's the same, it's the same parade every day, but it, it changes every day, and, and, and the seasons change it too. Um, the guy over there with the bald head reading. Okay, he comes here. I don't wear a watch because I ride my bicycle. 3:30, he's here having has having a cigarette and reading his newspaper. And basically, sometimes I'm sitting here and and everybody. Everybody who's sitting here, I've drawn them. It's nobody new, because I come at the same time, and all these people come at the same time. Voilà, beaucoup d'habitués, beaucoup d'habitués ici qui viennent, beaucoup de gens habitués. Didier has been working here for the last 25 years, and Arnaud, Arnaud for the last six. But Pascal, well, Pascal, behold the French nose. Centuries before the internet was ever born, cafes were like neighborhood chat rooms. They were one of the few places where all strata of society could mingle. And around the bar, there was an exchange of ideas that drew artists, aristocrats, writers, and the rabble as well. Because cafes were also hotbeds of political unrest. Uh, supposedly, Karl Marx met Engels in a Parisian cafe. And it was not uncommon that the regime in power would send spies into the cafe to keep track of dissidents. People used to get their mail there. The barmen would take phone messages for them. Well, those days are long gone, but Le Select maintains a link to its storied past. But this is the original uh, front of it. Mm -hmm. It opened in 1923 and quickly became one of the most popular cafes in Montparnasse because it was open 24 hours and catered to the whims of its bohemian clientele. It hasn't changed much in 80 some odd years. I mean, they, they keep it basically looking like an original cafe. But if for a tourist, cafes are a sentimental icon, for Parisians, they're slowly losing their luster. More and more cafes are changing their look, trying to capture a younger, hipper crowd that prefers something less traditional and a bit more... You know, sort of more disco, groovy flavor. I don't know, what do you call that? But maybe the biggest blow to the French is the new cafes don't even allow smoking. So places like Le Select may one day be just a memory.
In fact, across France, the number of cafes has decreased 90% in the last 100 years. And in Paris... In the 1880s, there were 45,000 cafes, and uh, the number has dropped to about 7,000 today. In fact, Bernard, the owner of my favorite cafe, keeps a list of all the cafes in the neighborhood that have closed in the last 20 years. We've went, went on. Uh, 25 years, okay. And what isn't closing or changing its look may be going corporate. Even one of Hemingway's haunts, like La Coupole. I mean, La Coupole is now owned by a big corporation, and it's just not anything like it used to be. I mean, that building is built in the 80s. It used to just be two floors. But, as we know, the French can also be uh, stubborn, uh, like Monsieur Francis, who runs Le Select and wants only... Garder cette, uh, cette ambiance de, de bohème. Et voilà. Parce que autour de nous, ils ont tous changé. C'est ça, mais il faut quand même garder cette tradition et garder ce, ce contact-là. Mm. So, with all the material he's accumulated, Rick and writer Noel Riley Fitch have put together a book due out this fall. But if you can't wait till then to see his work... Oh, here, this is mine. You could always pick up the latest issue of... This one's mine. Yeah. Uh, Rick may be best known so far as an artist for Mad Magazine. It, it's, it's really a fan... I mean, I've been working there for almost 20 years, and uh, I have some really close friends there with some of the artists and some of the editors, and, and it's a family. I mean, of course it's fun because it's mad, but uh, the people are, are, are just great. And it gives him enough time to document what may in fact be the passing of an era. The one thing seems never to change, and maybe there's no answer, but I've always wondered why so many artists are drawn to this city. I mean... Well, it is Paris. I mean, what more do you need? You know? yeah. And hopefully, as the man said, we'll always have it. Next, Ben Stein on that other Paris.